I've gotten a lot of questions from my email subscribers about whether you can keep roosters together or not. And before I dive into that, I want to share this little clip from another of my subscribers, Diana. So thank you, Diana, for letting me share your clip with the world. Let's look at that one more time. And what you see here is Diana's flock of chickens, which has seven hens and two roosters. You see the first cute little rooster walking there, that's Carlos. He does have some trouble walking, but he makes it work. And then you also see the beautiful rooster Paloma. And finally you see them side by side getting along just great. So the short answer is yes, in some cases you can keep multiple roosters together. And you see this in this clip, Diana said that she did not even have to work with these roosters at all. She said that they did have one fight when they were maturing, but Carlos gave in to Paloma and ever since they've gotten along fine. So Paloma does dance at Carlos in the morning, which seems to be a sign of aggression in this case. And then Carlos gives them a little bit of space and then they seem to be fine for the rest of the day. And Paloma even doesn't have any problem with Carlos mating with the hens. He's got no problem with that. So this is good news that sometimes you can get this kind of scenario with your roosters. However, and this is a big however, it doesn't always go this smoothly and it can go really, really badly. So I'm gonna show you a couple of photos here. You can see Pearly, this is one of my roosters, and you can see Rufio, another one of my roosters. And these photos were taken after they had a big fight. So Rufio and Pearly were my very first roosters with my first batch of chickens I got about four years ago. I still have both of these roosters, they're doing great. And with that first batch of chickens, I bought 30 chicks, which was way too many. I've regretted that, but that's what I did. And they were all supposed to be pullets, but two of them ended up being cockerels or roosters. For those of you new to chickens, pullets are female chicks, cockerels are male chicks. And I knew that I'd probably be getting some roosters, which is actually why I didn't order any. And that's because sexing of hatchery chicks tends to be only about 90% accurate. So you can expect that you might end up with 10% roosters and sometimes you may end up with way more than that. So little side note here, if you're new to chickens and you don't want roosters or you're just not allowed to have roosters where you live, you should consider getting sex linked chickens. So sex links are a crossbreed or cross breeds. There's a lot of different ways to make them. And so basically that just means that these are chicks who have parents from two different breeds and they're very special because they are born with a physical appearance that lets you be able to tell, tell males from females. So for example, uh, the female chicks, the pullets might be very dark, whereas the male chicks might be white. And that's way more accurate than typical hatchery sexing. So if you order sex links, you can be pretty much guaranteed that you're only gonna get females. All of my chicks this year were sex links. I got two red sex links and two black sex links. We got Poppy Pippa, Minnie and Madge, and they have just been wonderful birds. So consider that, but back to roosters. So in the case of my first two roosters, Rufio and Pearly, they never got into any major fights when they were younger. So at around maturity, at about three or four months, they did have some scuffles, but there was never any blood and there was never any injury. And then eventually Rufio came out as the dominant rooster. However, Rufio and Pearly never got along the way Carlos and Paloma do. What it was always like was that Rufio was the main rooster and Pearly kind of lived a bit on the outskirts. So Rufio didn't like Pearly near him 
and Rufio did not want Pearlie mating with the hens. And so Pearlie would mate with hens on occasion. Some of them actually preferred him. So they used to go behind the tractor and mate out of view. Uh, but they never had a close relationship like Paloma and Carlos. And that's totally normal. So actually the way that Pearlie and Rufio worked things out was how chickens in the wild typically work things out. So there was this really great study done in the 1960s on feral chickens. And they found that basically there were all these separate flocks living on this island. And the flocks all pretty much had a dominant rooster. And then there would be several other subordinate roosters who lived on the margins of the flock. And so the dominant rooster didn't like to be around them. And those subordinate roosters played their own role. So they were there for protection, to warn the flock of dangers. They were there to help the hens find nesting spots. And then when the hens were done nesting, they sing the egg song. And in the wild, when hens sing the egg song like that, a subordinate rooster will come out to find that hen and he will escort her back to the flock. The subordinate roosters will mate with the hens when the dominant rooster is not in view or when he's not close enough to attack them. And so you can see that's basically the same as how Pearlie and Rufio interact with each other. My roosters aren't friends, but they do tolerate each other. So let me go back to this scenario where you see these two bloody roosters. What happened here? So these two got along fine for about two years. And then Pearlie, who you'll remember was the subordinate rooster, he started challenging Rufio a lot one spring and they started getting in a lot of little skirmishes. And then one morning, my husband went out to open up the coop for the day and he said that Rufio just sprinted out just as fast as you can imagine, just sprinted out of that coop, completely covered in blood, and that he just ran for the hills. And I mean, he literally ran far over this hill. My chickens never go very far. He ran far and down into the creek bed. And then my husband saw that Pearlie, who was in the coop, was also very bloody. He checked him over. There was nothing serious. It was all just surficial. And then he went out in the hills to try to find Rufio, but Rufio was in the creek bed and our creek beds are, they're these seasonal creeks. We don't really get a lot of water here, but they're just covered in these willow bushes and they're impenetrable. So with Rufio down in there, there's just no way you could possibly find him if you wanted to. And my husband could not find him. So I went out to look for him and I went over the hill down to the creek bed and I started calling his name and he did come out of the creek bed to see me. Rufio and I are bonded and that's one of the big advantages of bonding with your chickens is that when something does happen, if they get too far away or if you have them confined and one gets out, um, if you have that bond, it's much easier to deal with these kind of situations. So I checked Rufio over and he was fine. All of these wounds also were just superficial. I couldn't find really any wounds. Um, so I think most of the blood was coming from the comb and the wattles. And then he did have, unfortunately, a tear in his lower eyelid. It wasn't anything serious, but I'm glad that was the worst thing that came out of this. I'll put it that way. So probably what happened here was that Pearlie and Rufio were in this coop early in the morning and they probably just got in one of those little scuffles that they'd been having where Pearlie was challenging Rufio. And I think what happened was that Rufio likely got kind of stuck in a corner maybe, kind of just backed in and he couldn't get away. And that's probably why he got beat up so bad and why he was so fast to get out of there. And so this is lesson number one, if you are trying to keep multiple roosters together, is that if you are confining them to a smaller space, you are very likely to end up with a dead rooster. So if you're like me and you totally free range your chickens or you have a very big backyard, you're in a much better position to keep multiple roosters because there is room to get away. Whereas if you are keeping your chickens in a run or a small backyard, then you're going to have to be really, really, really careful about keeping more than one rooster. So if you're doing that, you're going to need to keep a really, really close eye on them as they come into maturity because that's when they really start fighting. And you might even want to keep a baby monitor in the coop if you're at home so you can hear them if they do get into a fight. And you are going to need to have some kind of backup plan for if these two roosters cannot live together in that space. So I'm going to give you guys a few ideas for what you can do if you end up in that scenario. So 
The first thing is that you can keep more than one flock. So you can have um, one rooster with one flock of hens, another rooster with another flock of hens, or you can keep a rooster with your hens and then keep a separate bachelor flock of just roosters that are separated. But if you are low on space, that's not going to be a good option for you. The second thing you can do is you can work on training your roosters to live peacefully together. It's not that it's a hard thing to do, but it can be very time consuming and you need to be patient. The steps are actually very simple and you will need to separate the roosters from each other when you're not working with them until you get them trained where you want them to be. But before that, you'll need to separate them when they're not there because obviously they could really hurt each other while you're gone. And training roosters is a bit of a bigger topic. So I'm actually gonna do a full video on that next week. So if that's a topic you're interested in and you wanna be notified when it comes out, make sure to subscribe below. And then the third approach is that you can get rid of that second rooster or whatever rooster it is that's causing an issue in your flock. And by get rid of him, that means that you can either rehome him or kill him. And I want to be very clear here that usually it means you're going to have to kill him because roosters are notoriously difficult to rehome. So most people don't want roosters and people who do want a rooster usually already have a rooster and those people usually don't want more roosters for the same reason that you don't want more roosters. Sometimes you can get lucky and find someone you know who is willing to take your rooster in and you might be one of those people who's ultra lucky and has a sanctuary near you. I have had a few people email and tell me that they just dropped their roosters off at the local sanctuary and that's so awesome. But most people are not going to have that option. We do not have a sanctuary here. Uh, I live outside of Boise, Idaho. So it's a big city, no rooster sanctuary. And actually my dream is to start one someday. But as of now, we don't have one and it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to find one to take in your roosters either. So if you're not willing or able to temporarily separate your rooster and put the uh, time and effort into training them to live peacefully together, then you probably are going to have to kill your extra rooster or roosters and that's just the reality of it. Okay, let me get back to Pearly and Rufio and what happened here. So. After this fight, Rufio would not go anywhere near the flock. He was terrified. And then later on, when he did start getting a bit closer to the flock, Pearly would chase him away. But in these initial stages, he was living over the hill. He did not even want to come back in sight of the flock. And so I ended up at night housing him in a separate coop. And I have a couple of extra coops here, so that wasn't really a problem for me. And I just gave Rufio his own coop and I put a sweeter heater in there over the roosting bars so he could stay warm at night and that worked fine but you'll need to keep that in mind if you have roosters that are fighting you need some kind of setup where you can separate the other one especially at night you don't want to lock them in the coop together um, so you might want to bring that second rooster into the garage you might want to keep him in a dog crate at night or something like that if for some reason you absolutely have to house them in the same coop at night, do not put that second rooster in the coop until it's already dark and then you make sure to get him out of the coop while it's still dark in the morning. Um, you just, you don't want something to happen like what happened with Pearly and Rufio where the sun comes up and one rooster can't get away. I mean, I was so lucky and Rufio was so lucky that he ended up okay. So I just want to do another little side note here um if you're considering having more than one rooster and that's that if you have multiple roosters the other thing you need to worry about is that your hens can get kind of torn up on their backs so what's happening is that uh if you have too many roosters a ratio that has too many roosters to hens and that ratio is going to vary a lot amongst flocks but one rule of thumb is one rooster for every 10 hens but any way you look at it, if you have more than one rooster, and sometimes if you just have one rooster, this is even good advice, you always wanna have some hen saddles on hand. And so hen saddles are just these um, pieces of 
cloth with fluff in them that cover the hen's backs and good hen saddles will also cover the tops of the wings. A lot of hen saddles don't. They end up kind of wrapping around the body and leave the wings kind of exposed. You want ones that cover the wings. I'll link to the ones that I like below. There are only a couple of brands I found that are any good. But you want to have these on hand and as soon as you see some kind of feathers missing a bit from the back or the tops of the wings on your hens, you want to put these hen saddles on. If you don't put them on, what's happening here is that the hens are just mating so much that um, the feathers are coming out. And so when the rooster gets on top of a hen, first of all, he bites the back of her neck. He jumps up and then he kind of has to get his balance on there and he does this kind of pedaling sometimes with his feet. It's called treading. And just by him being up on top of her, there's all this force pulling on the feathers and so they can, they can get pulled out. It's not the rooster being mean. It's not a sign of aggression. It, it annoyed me when I, I took Hooter, my bird with the eye problem. Some of you on my email list know about this. When I took her to the vet um, and Hooter was missing feathers from her back and had a hen settle on and the vet said, oh yeah, roosters are so mean. And it, anyways, a side note to my side note, it really bothered me. But uh, the point is, is that if, especially if you're going to have multiple roosters, make sure you have these hen saddles on hand and you just put them on your hens and you don't have to worry about those feathers getting pulled out. If they are getting pulled out and you don't put a saddle on, your hens will end up with backs that are exposed and the backs of their wings exposed. And then the rooster might end up tearing into her skin. So just by having his claws on her when he's mating, he can rip into her skin that is no longer protected from the feathers because they're not there and then you can have open wounds and not only is that very painful for the hen but um, she also can get sunburned when she doesn't have feathers there but aside from that those open wounds sometimes other chickens will cannibalize those so especially when they're locked in the coop the chickens see that meaty stuff and they just can't help themselves they start pecking at it so I actually watched this horrible story on a YouTube channel once and I actually like this channel but in this particular story, the guy had two hens and one rooster and he was keeping them confined in a fairly small space. And one of the hens got all her feathers ripped out because one rooster, two hens in a small space, you're, you need hen saddles in that case. Uh, she got her feathers ripped out, her back got all torn up and the second hen cannibalized the first one to death. And they tried when the first hen got in really bad condition to take her in the house and nurse her to health, it was too late. And those kind of stories are just so sad because it's so easy to avoid that. It's so, so easy to avoid that. And so if you are considering roosters, just have those saddles on hand. All right, end of side note, let's get back to Pearly and Rufio. So if you want to know how Rufio's story ends, um, he basically lived separate from the flock for a little bit. And then after a week, week and a half, he started getting closer to the flock again. He still was pretty far off but he was getting closer and it was kind of funny because a bunch of the hens just sprint out to wherever he is to mate with him and then they sprint back to the flock but um he lived like that and then he oh hey hey Peppa um and then he just started getting slowly and slowly closer to the flock and then after a few weeks he had pretty much reintegrated with the flock hi poppy Got a little poppy down here hi poppy Hi, Madge. Hey, Minnie. <laughs> and there's Sage. Okay. <laughs> so he, I had to house him in that other coop at night. <sighs> Sorry, they're being really funny. I had to house Rufio in that other coop at night for a few weeks. And then he slowly integrated back in the flock. And now things are completely back to normal. They've been back to normal for a couple of years now. And the only thing that's changed is that Rufio is now the subordinate rooster and Pearly is the dominant rooster. So all of this worked out in my flock. And the reason that it worked out is because these roosters had so much space to work it out. And that's actually another thing about the paper I told you about that was written in the 1960s. Oh, now my cat's over here. Hi, Tuffy. 
um, that paper from the 1960s that's just such an awesome paper. I have learned so much of what I know about chickens from just that one paper. Uh, but in that paper, these researchers, so they studied these feral chickens on an island, and then they also captured some of these feral, feral chickens, and they moved them to a confined area. So they still had a decent sized yard. It wasn't huge, but I mean, they didn't confine them in cages or anything. They had a yard for them and they had a coop for them. And they then looked at their behavior in confinement so they could learn more about them and also compare that to the wild. But anyways, so with these roosters, they told one story about this rooster fight that was, I mean, it was just heartbreaking. I cried when I read it. Like I hated that I read it after I read it. But the gist of it is that these two roosters got in a fight and one of them got to the point where he was beaten really badly and he died in this really horrific way. And so I'm only bringing this up now because the researchers talked about this and they talked about, they compared that to in the wild and they said they had never seen anything like that kind of brutality between roosters in the wild, just nothing like it. And their interpretation for why this was is because they think that in the wild, there's just so much space that when a rooster starts losing, he can run away. He can hide, he can go somewhere else. And in confinement, they can't do that. And so, <laughs> so many animals here, they're all being so funny. So um, these terrible fights where roosters kill each other are not something that you see in the wild. They are something you see where the rooster who really starts losing can't get away. And when he can't get away, he the end of him can just be brutal. So I hope that helps you better understand rooster behavior and rooster fighting. And when you ask the question, can you keep more than one rooster in the same flock? The answer is maybe. And I know that's a horrible answer. Everybody hates that answer. But it really does depend on the temperament of your roosters. You'll remember Carlos and Paloma. They share just seven hens between them. And they live in harmony and happiness together. And it also depends on the amount of space that you have. So Rufio and Pearly are the good example for that. So remember in the next video, I'll be teaching you how to train roosters who don't get along, how to get along and live happily together. And until then, happy chickening.